If you remember last week's video, we put stainless steel skid plates on our TRX-4Ms. Then, we tried to take them for a drive and we realized that something was critically wrong. We discovered that the plastic gears in the diff were fried. So today, we are going to put in the Traxxas metal diff gears. Welcome back to 3x7 Outdoor. If you haven't already, subscribe and ring the bell so you do not miss another one of our awesome uploads. Today, we have metal diff gears for the Defender and the Bronco, and we're gonna show you how to install them. The reason we're doing this is because of the noise the Defender made in the last video. Oh, what's going on? Look at it. Uh-oh. We have... We have a failure. And the thing is, this thing has been front wheel drive for a darn long time, and it is very annoying to not be able to get up basically anything. For 20 bucks, you can put metal gears in your differentials, front and rear. It's a good investment, and you're probably not going to need any diff gears ever again. Anyway, shall we tear into these? Let's tear in. Exacto cut. <whistles> on the label, it says metal gears, front and rear. So you may think, oh, they work on the front or the rear. But no, it actually comes with both the front and the rear in the same package, which seems like something Traxxas wouldn't do because you'd think they would make more money that yeah, way if they didn't. Them individually. But thank you, Traxxas. That's quite nice. Yep. 20 bucks for both cars. Easy. 20 bucks, two cars. It is not clarified what type of metal this is, but I am pretty sure it's not stainless steel like the diff covers are. No, it's sintered metal, probably. Powdered metal. Yeah. Formed into a... It's uh, not as quality as the stainless steel skid plates, I would say. Those are high quality. But these will still work. Funny thing is, we're gonna have to undo our work and take off the metal diff covers to get into the diff. That we just did. So as you can see, this was made in a mold because you can see like the little imprints of everything, but it is non-magnetic metal, so that is interesting. Even though aluminum does seem like kind of a soft metal for a diff gear, we are pretty sure these are aluminum. It doesn't seem like it would be a mix of different metals or else it would be magnetic or something like that. And they're mm -hmm. definitely not gonna give you stainless steel gears. So comment down below what you think about that and your opinions on like what kind of metal this is. So basically everything has to come apart. The wheels, the diff covers, and the skid plate, all the shocks, and we need to get down to the axle in order to get to the diffs. Yep. All right, so three screws can get out this part, the rear axle and drive shaft all in one three screws, the screw for this shock, the screw for this shock, and one screw that goes through the middle. These two go together like that, and these go to where the shocks are, so that's one, two screws. One, two, three. Easy enough to get out this entire piece. Yep, and then you have to tear this down all the way. You have to get your yoke off here, because this is gonna come out. Your stub axles have to come off. These two screws here hold that bushing in, which you can change to a bearing if you choose. You have to take those two screws out in order to be able to pull this out. Mm -hmm. You have to take the diff cover off to get to that. That plastic one is perfectly intact. Still works, but we're changing it anyway. I'm excited to see the one in mine because it's gonna be pretty marred up. That's the next step, getting out all those screws in this piece. So at first I thought I was gonna have to cut my heat shrink job off but I was able to just move it out of the way enough with a little tool to get that screw to come out. So the heat shrink is still intact. All right, so I got the screws out which are holding in these bushings and now all I have to do is pull the axle out. That comes out, that comes out, and now I just need to take off these four screws. One, two, three, four and then the diff cover will come off along with the skid plate. That is a really nice thing. There's no extra screws for the skid plate. It just replaces the diff cover screws. Pull that out, pull that out. Now this should come out, where's the, see? There you go. So now all you need to do is take this, plop it in there, just kind of stick that in there. Take the bigger gear, you plop it in there just like that, and then you can put your axles back in and just do everything in reverse. You can see by the curvature of how the diff case is like mm -hmm. the shape of the diff case, you can see which way this big gear goes in. You're not gonna get that wrong. So I'm just grabbing a little uh, automotive grease just on the end of a tool and we'll just smear it on there and then rotate the gear a little bit. Maybe throw a touch more in. Yeah, it's already quieter. 
I know you guys can't really hear that. And that's how you do that. So let me finish mine. Alrighty, right, so I've got all the screws out, so we're gonna take off the diff cover and see the carnage. Oh, we can see that diff is suffering. Also make sure to put your bushings back in with your diffs or else that's not gonna be great. This is the ring gear right here. You can see that is pretty marred up. And inside of here actually needs quite a bit of cleaning because of all the plastic pieces. Pinion is in decent shape. I don't think that I'd want to use it again though because it's probably going to slip. But it, it's plastic. Yeah, but it is in decent shape. It's really only the ring gear that has the problems right now. But of course we are going to swap everything. So pinion gear is going to pop right in. Then we're gonna take our metal ring gear, put the bushings just like that, insert it in there, completely intact. And now all we need is just a little bit of grease. A little bit, axle one, axle F, I mean two. And just spin that around, get a little bit more grease until it's silent. Listen. Listen to that. It sounds pretty good. It's not mashing or anything. This is completely together, completely done. Ready to go back in the car. And this is the microphone. So silent. It's silent. It's silent. So that is really... Really it's a nice. good sign. There are no gaskets or seals on the diff cover, so I wouldn't recommend putting in a ton of grease. Like, do not fill it with grease whatsoever, because I don't know if it could leak out or not, mm -hmm. but just get a good amount in there just to lubricate everything, make sure it works all, works properly. All right, so I'm putting in my last screw here. All I had to do was make sure that these were lined up. I recommend putting the, this screw, I recommend putting that one in first before you do mm -hmm. these, because it's really hard and I had to take it all apart and redo it because I couldn't do it with these in first. And I kept the pins in the hex heads right here so that I wouldn't lose them. That's good thinking. And now both the wheels are on, everything is intact, as you can see, and it's ready to drive. And we're gonna see if it has all that clicking sound. Sounds pretty quiet. That's amazing. I'm so glad to have four-wheel drive back. So if you don't already know, I put the metal gears in the back diff, but not the front diff. And I'm wondering if the front diff is gonna go out because there's metal gears in the back diff and there's grease. Don't know, but we're gonna see, the test of time will tell. Also, why is it squatted? That's just a question I have. I don't, it's a little squatted. I'm not one of those guys, I promise. And the Bronco also is driving. I need to get more of a setup like the Bronco. The Bronco has the wheel weights and everything. It's got the painted undercarriage. Jeez, the Fox body blue painted undercarriage. Same as this. Nice. Same color as the actual Fox body. She goes. Oh. Oh, it couldn't do that before. Uh-oh. Yes. She's up. There we go. Oh. Now that I've tried the crawler gears and I've tried the stock gears, I haven't tried the fast gearing yet, but the crawler transmission and the stock transmission, which is the trail transmission, um, I really like the crawler transmission because you can really creep through things. Whereas say if something's in front of you like this with the trail transmission, It'll do this whining thing to the point where if it's too hard for it, the transmission will just give up and not try so it doesn't burn out the motor, which is a good thing. But with the crawler transmission, it will keep going no matter what. That is something that I really love about it. Like sometimes, you know, that, that motor whining sound, it gets to be too loud and it'll just stop going through what I know that it can. It thinks that it can't do it, but I know that it can. And it gets in the way a little bit sometimes when you're doing technical crawling stuff. Um, so for that, I do prefer the crawler transmission. 
Gee whiz. wheels lifting. Boom. Made it. Oh, almost made it. Oh. Oh. Can I just hang her off? They do. Not flipping over at all. There you go. Probably one of my favorite cars that Traxxas has ever made. They're fun, they're compact, you can take them anywhere. Take them about anywhere they fit in your car, they can fit in the palm of your hand. It's really, really nice. Backpack. And, you know, obviously they're cheap, but they're not Toys R Us cheap where you can't buy parts if they mm. break. Buy all the parts, you can buy upgrade parts. Even the aftermarket is starting to fill up with parts. Aftermarket is crazy for these things and they're, they've only been out for less than a year. Really, really, really good choice on Traxxas by making a cheap car that's fun and affordable to fix. Hey Traxxas, I'd love to see a 79 Ford body. What was the generation before that? You know, the 60s? A bump side? A bump side, a 60s mm -hmm. F-150? That's something that I haven't seen from Traxxas yet, which would be cool too. I haven't seen that from anybody. These cars are awesome and extremely capable considering $150. And like I say every time, I would take a TRX4M for $200 if it came with stainless steel screws. I think we should head out to the outro. Okay. That's about all we have to say. It is, yeah. So I guess with that, I didn't mean to drop Oops. that. We'll see you in the next video. 3x7 Outdoors signing out. Bye for now.